Hey guys, I'm about to explain to you why being in Ghana is a much better option than being in the U.S. during this recessionary period. More when I return on the Eric McNeil Be Free Show. Black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Hey guys, welcome. You just discovered the Eric McNeil Be Free Show, where it's all about being financially independent, responsible for self, enjoying life and empowering others free. So today I'm just going to address a question that I had on my Facebook page uh, uh, from a Facebook friend. Um, and I've talked about this in the past before, but I'm going to go back into it. Um, but anyway, her question is, uh, you know, just one question, Eric. She says, uh, what about the city, right? So Ghana has the city as the currency. So she said, what about the city? Ghana's inflation rate is over 27%, and they are looking for a bailout from the IMF. The U.S. is 8.6%. Unemployment is another factor in Ghana, 13%, and the U.S. is 3.6%. Um, I'm not rooting for the downfall of any nation, but looking at the numbers, I'm curious what you know outside of these statistics that no one else can see, right? And um, she's referring to the fact that, you know, I'm always saying, hey, y'all need to come to Ghana. So she's like, well, we come to Ghana, what about all this? Well, let's, first of all, let's talk about the numbers, right? The numbers are very misleading. Those numbers that they're giving you for the U.S., they are a lie, right? You can multiply those by at least two and maybe three, right? So when they tell you, hey, the unemployment is only 8.6%, don't, don't believe that. Don't believe that hype, right? Um, yeah, because even with the unemployment, um, they don't, count those numbers if the person has just given up on looking for a job. They don't even count that person as being unemployment, unemployed anymore. Do you get that? So it's like, hey, um, yeah, we, you know, you go in there, you get your unemployment, you uh, go in and fill out the form that you're looking for a job and they count you as being unemployed. But the person who just say, hey, I didn't gave, been gave up hope. I ain't finding no job. You're not tallied. So the numbers are very misleading. Um, and then, um, and it's true, uh, the one thing is that when, because the US dollar is the world reserve currency, when it catches a cold, the entire world catches the flu, right? So if you're dependent on that US dollar, um, whether you be Ghana or Nigeria or whomever, you're gonna have a tough time. So this is what Ghana finds itself in. Now is a tough time because the problems that the U.S. dollar is having, and uh, so it spills over. But now here's the kicker, and this is why uh, I moved to Ghana, because I very well knew what was coming to our world, right? So when I first started talking about moving, and I told my family in 2015 that I was relocating, I explained to them that this is what was coming. I got everybody together, and I said, Something is coming to this world that's going to turn it upside down and the U.S. would be ground zero for that something. And I said it would lead to all kind of chaos. So they asked me, well, Eric, if you believe that something bad is coming to the world, why on earth would you uh, want to relocate to Africa? If, if it's going to affect everybody, why are you relocating there? And I explained it like this. Africa is not centralized. America and the West are centralized economies. So if you are in a, uh, you know those, those, you know, I always explain it like this, that they have these skyscrapers, uh, these huge buildings. I say now, when things are going well, people will pay more to be at the top of those buildings, right? They call them the penthouses. People pay way more to be in the penthouse than they would pay to be at the bottom of that building. 
that's when things are going well. However, on the flip side, when things are not going well, let's assume that the skyscraper catches fire. Where would you rather be? Would you rather be at the top of that skyscraper or would you rather be at the bottom of that skyscraper, right? You'd rather be at the bottom. I say, so this, if the um, world was a skyscraper, then what countries would you put at the top right now? Who'd be at the penthouse? You're right, America is at the penthouse. And what countries would be at the bottom? Right? Some of your African countries would be at the bottom. Right? So the fire has started and it's starting to blaze. And so because the African countries are considered to be at the bottom, they have the best chance to survive this thing because their economies are not centralized. Right? If you want to destroy a people in a decentralized economy, what do you do? You just say, well, let, let somebody purchase all of the land up and you can't farm. Let somebody go and um, destroy the few uh, food processing plants, you know, burn them all down. Uh, you know, let's go and buy uh, people out with 10,000 head of cattle and pigs and things like that. Let's, let's buy them out and then kill the animals, right? So you, you can easily create a food shortage because everything is so centralized. Whereas when you come to Africa, things are not so centralized. People still farm themselves, right? So you're dealing with two different uh, economies here. For instance, in America, roughly 84% of the population lived in urban areas. In Ghana, is roughly 57%. But the thing is, is that uh, most people still have families who own land and grow food and when they, uh, and their houses belong to them, right? The banking industry here is still in its infancy. So it means that they won't have mortgages for the most part on their homes. So in a recession, they still gonna have land they're still going to be uh, have access to food, right? And they don't have a mortgage. But in America, <laughs> you don't have that. You stay, you, you rent an apartment or, you know, a home. You live in a city and everything is centralized. So the central planners want to cause chaos, they can, right? And then you have to figure also that Ghana has a consistent... Uh, temperature all year long. The temperature is always comfortable. So you don't have a need if the power goes off for days, there's not going to be a huge uh, uh, uproar because they're already used to the power going off uh, for days. And nothing happens because at the end of the day, it's not a life or death matter. But in America, at times, certain times of the year, when the temperature drops uh, below uh, you know, 20 degrees or something crazy and the power goes off in a city, it's a life or death matter. Do you get it? And also, another problem with being in America is that America uh, is known as this great melting pot. All these people were brought together and the reason that America grew so fast is that you had a lot of people that was brought together, uh, you know, under the British colony, and they were given resources, right? So, so then it, and it, it attracted people from Europe, some of the greatest minds around the world. And you give these people resources, and you give them uh, equipment and proper training, so it grew and it became kind of hey, this is the place to make money. So it attracted all these people. But the same thing that made America so great so fast is also the same thing that's going to pull it down so fast is that you have all of these people from around the world who now the money is dried up, they're going to go at each other's throats, right? It's so easy to divide and conquer these people. So you focus these people on one another because they're not 
family. You get that? They don't consider themselves family. You have different ethnic groups that don't see themselves as family. So the only thing that made them uh, a country is they have this single flag. But when you take away the money, do they see each other as family? Whereas in Ghana, yes, you have various tribes, but at the end of the day, you still have kind of a single people. I hope you understand that. Um, and when the power goes off, they can easily cope. Not a life or death matter. Uh, they uh, all have their own farms, growing food. You know, when I built my house in the mountain, in the little village right down at the foot of the mountain, you know, they lived in kind of little um, tin huts and mud houses and nothing fancy. Uh, they had maybe some mm, five acres that they made that they just grew, five, ten acres. They grew everything they needed for survival. You know, they had corn, they had cassava, plantains, tomatoes, okra, um, you name it. It was growing there. Now, did they care what the economy was doing at any given time? No, they didn't. They didn't. That was their economy, that food growing. They had access to water and they had the little huts. So um, this is the life that Ghanaians are still able to live, but Americans no longer can live like that. Why do you think people were able to get through the Great Depression in America? Is because they weren't as urbanized at that point, right? So uh, around in the 20s, you know, you had maybe urbanization reached about 28, 29%. And then of course, as the depression came on, the people left the cities and went back uh, to their farms and, you know, to their family farms, but, uh, and it dropped uh, around to 8%. But now you have 84% of Americans living in urban areas. They don't own land. They can't just go back like they did back then and go back to their family farms because Bill Gates done purchased all the land. You can't even buy it if you want to. So where are you going to go now? There's nothing to go back to, right? So what do you do at this point, David? So this is why I'm telling you. See, there's still other, you know, we we have a very, uh, let's say, informal economy here. Most they're, they're, most people don't work in no corporate jobs. You look at what they're doing, they're selling uh, things off of their heads at the traffic stop to get some little money, but um, it's very informal here in Ghana. And, um, but in America, you depend on a corporate job. What do you do when you lose that corporate job? Where do you go? All these people here in the city, uh, in Ghana, they can go back into the country, you know, back into the uh, country here and into their family lands. They don't have to be here in the city. Most of them just come to the city because they uh, think, hey, they can get paid and stuff. But they still have families with land. So it's not a do or die for most people here. I want you to understand. So guys, really, you have to put things into perspective. Um, think about it like this. The, it's in, you know, and I, I've given this example a few times, but imagine it's in the dead of winter, power goes off. And then they say, well, you know, it's a storm. It's a snowstorm or something. I don't know what the reason is going to be, but it's a snowstorm and the trucks can't deliver food to the grocery stores. And strike two, no power. You in the dead of winter. Trucks can't get food to the stores. There's a pandemic going on. There's racial tensions. My brothers, my sisters, I'm telling you, that is an explosive combination. And that is what they're leading you to, right? They're leading you guys like uh, sheep, you know, like, hey, we're about to create these problems and um, yeah, and you talk about freedom, I'll tell you, when the problems explode <laughs> and you guys talk about, hey, um, 
you know, a lot of Americans, you know, talk about their freedom and, you know, fighting, you know, any kind of, there ain't going to be no uh, military invasion on their soil. When this thing, when the shit hits the fan, Americans are going to be screaming for like a military invasion. You're going to be screaming for the UN to come in and say, and, 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 and save you guys, right? That's, you know, that's it. They want to get, they, they want to get an external military on your soil. That's all they have to do. You know, just create this type of confusion. And then once you start starving, you'll be screaming, uh, UN, please come help us. Please come help us. Boom. And UN comes in and they take over, you know. So don't say it can't happen. I'm telling you guys right now. That's why I'm telling you. Uh, make sure you have your passport handy. Make sure you have an exit plan, okay? I've been sh sharing this with you. Exit plan, guys, okay? And um, and it brings up another matter is where I, why I tell you you should be as self-sufficient as possible. This is what migrating culture crossing is all about, is to build a self-sufficient, sustainable community that grows, it has its own organic food forest, has its own water wells or boreholes, um, you know, its own um, solar mini grid, power grid, and can support itself. So when the economy falls off a cliff, which it will, then you know we are ahead. So we're not just in the business of selling real estate, we're in the business of being a hedge to a failing economy, guys. It's where migrating culture crossing is a smart investment. So you better get in, you know, where they're getting good. Uh, that's all I'm going to tell you. So, but at any rate, I just wanted to come on in here with that very quickly and, and discuss it. Um, guys, whether you like it or not, you know, they keep, they talking about, oh, we're teetering on a recession. Man, recession is here. You forget that's recession been here, you know. You 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 enter in depression at this point. <laughs> not a recession. You better start talking about depression, right? Things about to heat up, guys. So, um, any little money you got, you better go ahead and put that investment in migrating coach across. And even if you say, well, I just can't uh, relocate to Ghana right now, but you got some money and you want to protect the value of that money, well, you need to protect it with some assets that's not going to depreciate send it uh, and put it into migrating coach crossing at least you, you have your house in a self-sufficient community um if the bottom falls out of this thing and um i mean you know we we got some of the smartest people uh, around imaginable who are investing in migrating coach crossing right so um yeah so you better want you know follow their lead uh, and put your money so you know your money just doesn't go up in smoke. At any rate, guys, uh, yeah, that's all I have for you for this video. If you like what we're talking about? Go ahead, hit that subscribe button, like, share, comment. Let me know what you think about all this. And uh, if you haven't already done so, hit the website www.migratingcoachacrossing.com. Check out our floor plans, the pricing, all of the detail, the specs, um, and you can still get your house for half price under the half price promo. And um, as long as you pay everything up front, you're willing to wait three years. Somebody asked me, well, Eric, if all this stuff is going to blow up and we're purchasing into migrating culture crossing, well, what does that do for our money, you know, that, that in, in the whole economy? And what I'm telling you is that that's why we are the hedge. We take on that risk. What we promise to do is we promise to build your house uh, to specifications that we've given you for the amount. If the bottom falls out, then that's our risk. We carry the burden of the risk. Do you understand that? So that's not something that you have to worry about. That's why you come to us for the hedge. We're telling you, yeah, we know what's coming. And we know how to hedge against it. You don't know how to hedge against it. Um, we do, and we take and we bear the burden. All right. So hopefully you understand that. Um, yeah. And also you can find me on Facebook at 
facebook.com forward slash Eric McNeil is free. And as always, hoorah, ahuru, now be free.